back to another video. Today we'll be talking about how to approach a supervisor. I got that as a question in my videos and I thought that is pretty interesting just to, to tell you a few little hints that you should follow when you are actually approaching a new academic, uh, someone who doesn't know you. It is worthwhile saying that most of the academics are receiving quite a lot of emails from people outside the university, people that they don't really know, and uh, it's good always to have something in that email that will spark their interest and they will come back and respond to you. There are some academics that they don't really respond to emails easily, some others it takes them like about a couple of weeks, others they respond immediately and that's their style with everything. In most of the UK universities there is this rule, either either as a compulsory or as a non-compulsory that we should be responding to emails within 48 hours but that is mainly applied for our students. When it comes to someone from outside perhaps you will have to wait a little bit more. Also, don't forget that academics, they have a lot of collaborators externally and they do receive numerous emails, some of them that they required a lot of work to do before you respond and they can be quite long as well. So since we've got everything in place now and you understand that if someone doesn't really respond to you immediately, don't take it personal, let's now see what is the best way to address an email to an academic and spark their interest so most probably get a response back, if not a positive response. So first things first, let's start from the subject line of the email. The subject line should be as clear as possible, as concise as possible and as interesting as possible so that the person who receives the email to actually look at it. It's similar to a title of a video in the YouTube. You're trying to make sure that it sells. Of course, it has to be accurate and not misleading. Second thing is the title. Now, when it comes to titles, it can be all over the place. So a lot of different approaches, a lot of different ways of calling people, a lot of different ways of calling when you respect someone, and that can be complete misunderstanding. So anything that I will say, it's mainly what is applied within the UK. So anything we receive in the UK, even from outside, this is how we want to be addressed. So try to adapt a similar system wherever you are. I know that there are countries that in order to respect someone you call that person a sir or a madam. But you must be appreciating that a sir is actually a title, a royal title here in the UK and is not really used if someone is not a sir. Even in that case you will use it as sir name surname. So sending a message which is dear sir or hi sir or even just sir is not appropriate and also it shows that you are writing that message and you send it to many different people at once so you don't even take time to actually address that email to the particular person which puts me into the thinking that most probably the email is not intended to come to me only therefore you haven't done the back work study, the homework in order to approach me and give me some attention and tell me that I've seen what you have done I've seen what you have published and I would like to work with you it means that you're sending an email to hundreds of people at the same time so what's the solution? You're always addressing that particular person. You should write the name and the surname or only the surname and with a particular title. Now, what the titles are? For us academics working in the UK, the titles are pretty straightforward. If you have a PhD, you are a doctor. So even if you are a research fellow or a postdoctoral researcher, to a lecturer, to a senior lecturer, to a reader or associate professor, you are called as doctor for any gender. Only when you become a professor, a full professor with a chair, then you are called professor. People are quite easy with that, so even if I'm a professor and you call me doctor is fine, or if I'm a doctor and you call me professor, I'm still fine, of course. There is just a little bit of a problem because it shows that you haven't done properly your studies, so you haven't really visited my profile, you haven't seen my background, and probably you don't know at what level I am in academia. To clarify that, you start with dear, doctor or professor, initials, surname and comma. 
and then you move on to the proper message that you have to write. There are some rules that you need to follow when you write that message. There are a lot of things that you can find online, a lot of template emails, but I would suggest you, I would recommend that you follow your own style in writing. There is no need to copy paste the template for writing an email. At the end of the day, you wanna spend a bit of time, make it really personal, own that email and say exactly what you want to say in the most clear manner. Also, that email should not be that long. So it should take me about a couple of minutes to read it. In other words, it should be around 100 to 150 words, maybe 200 words. Please do not extend more than five, six lines of an A-page paper. The reason that it should not be that long is A, because you lose the actual message that you want to say, most probably. Also, you may have mistakes, so you increase the chances of getting mistakes. And three, and the most important for me, is that when someone sees a long email and in that same day I have received another 100 emails, then it puts me off reading it. So I put it at the back, I archive it or I put a flag on it, but I don't read it at that very moment. And what you want is someone to actually read your email and respond immediately if possible. So if you want a quick answer, then please send a short email. Now, the email should have certain characteristics. First of all, it should be pretty direct to the person that you're sending it. So say that I'm this person and I found your research interesting. I've read this and that paper or I've read this project or I've seen your videos or I've talked to another student of yours and recommended me to contact you directly. So put that at the beginning so we know where this is coming from and is not an unsolicited email that someone just dropped us in our mailbox. Then go straight to your asking. What do you want to establish? If you're looking for a PhD, say that I'm looking for a PhD position and you have done a certain background study, you've looked at different opportunities, different universities, different countries, and then demonstrate why you are a good match for that PhD. In other words, you need a little bit of a sales pitch there. You need to sell yourself in the best possible way. Again, let me go back. There is no need to write 10 lines or 15 lines of your CV. The best you can do is just attach a two-page CV on your email. Frankly speaking, it is more important to know about what your expertise is, whether you've published papers, what kind of work you have done, what kind of research, what are your skills, and what is the topic that you would like to work which is along the lines of our work. And that is something that a lot of students are missing. They are proposing their own project, but they haven't really made it suitable for my work. So they haven't really checked my background. They haven't checked my papers. It's again, one of these very general emails that they are dear sir, and they send it to a hundred different people at the same time. And they say, I want to work in this project. And I guess they expect that one or two or three out of these 100 recipients, they will respond back and they will say, oh, hey, this is an interesting project, so I would like to supervise you. That shows maturity, that you're serious about what you're doing and that you're very much settled and you know what you want to achieve. In that case, even if there are no available positions, maybe the supervisor will try to find you a position for that PhD. Another thing that I find quite common nowadays is that the student who sends the email does not include any information about the funding, does not even include information as to whether there is funding available or is looking for a funding. In most cases, if there is a position available, it will be advertised. So if you have looked at about this person, maybe on his her personal website or in LinkedIn or in another kind of media, social media website, you will find if there is an available position. Or you can send an email and straight away ask, this is my background, this is where I am, do you have any available funding for a PhD? Trying to avoid it and leave it at the end is not ideal. Because in that case, what you create is a discussion that there should not be there at the first place. So the bottom line here 
is try to say at the beginning whether you are seeking for a funding or not. You may have a partial funding or you may can support yourself for a number of months or you're just seeking for a fully funded scholarship. When it comes to the attachments, as I said, you need at least the CV to be there. And then ideally you need to have there maybe your best paper to present it so you can show what you can do. Ideally, if the best paper you have, you are not the first author, then perhaps put another one that you are the first author as well. So we don't want to see what you can do collectively only as a group work, but what is your main skill and whether you can manage the whole paper yourself. And another thing that we would like to see a lot is a proposal. Now that is depending whether you're applying for a PhD or you are reaching someone in order to apply for a research grant or for a fellowship, the different proposals, they get different levels. So if you're going for a PhD, perhaps it can be like a two, three page proposal, very clear with a few pictures as well, a schematic representation of what you're trying to do, a bit of the literature review at the end, so it shows that you know the topic. If you are approaching someone for a fellowship, then maybe you want to have something more extensive or a research proposal that you have written before. All that is not extremely important. More important is the skills you have, the papers you have published, and what is the topic that you would like to work along the research skills and topics that the supervisor is working on. So something complementary or something which maybe is coming from a different perspective, but is matching really well. Of course, if you're applying for a PhD, it's also good to have some transcripts there, or if you received any awards, or if you have any other commendations and anything else significant that you have done and you want to put it there to promote yourself. All these things should be listed in your CV anyway, but sometimes it's good to see the actual award attached in that email. If you have more than two attachments, usually we download them all together, so ideally you want to have titles on every file that you've got. In that case, when we download the zip and we unzip it, we can see what its file is rather than looking through every file to find the appropriate documents such as the CV. Then at the end, I would recommend that you complete the email by saying best wishes or best regards, kind regards, sincerely or something like that and then you write your name, you write your affiliation. Ideally, if you have a research gate or a Google Scholar or something else, and we can easily find your papers or maybe a website, also it's good to have it there so we can go jump straight and find more about you. At the end of the day, these are the quick things that we can do at the very beginning before we even read the email. As I said, we do receive a lot of emails, unsolicited emails, a lot of times from people outside. So it's good for us to do a quick check and then prioritize that email and say, okay, we will read it and respond later on tonight or maybe next day or maybe next week based on the deadlines and everything else that we have around. So to synopsize, when you approach a professor, an academic, for asking about a PhD position or a fellowship or you want to collaborate with that person, have a very clear subject line on your email, then address the person correctly and then have about a five, six lines of an email which is pretty straightforward. It introduces yourself, it tells them where you're coming from and what the core skills of you are, why you would like to collaborate with that profession and what is your offering, what is that you're good at and why that professor would like to collaborate with you and supervise you and work with you. Then talk about whether there is funding or there is no funding, you're seeking for funding or you can support yourself to a certain degree. Just clarify that situation. Completing that email, you should ask the academic whether it's possible to have a quick chat and discuss more about the opportunities and also the skills, what else is required to also make some questions yourself. 
yourself because you want to show that this is not the only option you have. You, you are considering options. You found that academic is you're very interested about his or her work and you would like, you would love to join that group, but you're also maybe considering other things. This is not a bad thing. Thank you very much for watching the video. Until next time, bye bye.